Well, good morning, church. Good morning, church. <laughs> that's this what I said. <laughs> I know. I feel like we should like move a little closer together almost, but no, it's okay. Well, this is fun. Uh, anyways, this is just a really good gift that Michael and I have together to, to preach and uh, yeah, deliver the message this morning, kind of as a team, so it's fun. It's not two full sermons, just so you know. <laughs> We're going to both preach at the same time. You guys listen to me. You guys listen to my own. (laughs) That'd be fun. Uh, Anyways, Michael, I have a question for you. Yep. Um, How did you get here? Uh, See, these stairs. It's actually the same way you got here. I took the stairs. All right. Okay. Dad jokes. Just one. I'm done. Um, That's it. No. How did you get to be where you are? So how did, basically, how did you become the, the man that you are today? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can see it's a series of people who, has, who have invested in me uh, that brought me where I am today. And I can see over different seasons of my life uh, those that had significant roles to play. Uh, I was about 18, just turned 18, when I recognized how significant this was in my life. When I turned 18, my dad took me for a game of golf. Nice. Uh, but after every hole, he handed me a letter. This letter was from uh, a different adult in my life that had played a significant role in developing who I am. Hmm. Um, And and since then, you know, through college, it was different people. And when I came here to be a part of this church, Caleb, it was you Hmm. who who took me in, who taught me, who set me up for success in what it means to lead and serve in the church. Thanks, Michael. I mean, I didn't ask that question to hear that response. But it was right there. I would say probably similarly for me as well, right? Like, I am where I am today is because people built into my life or people maybe gave me a chance or an opportunity. I mean, as the famous poet John Donnie once said, he's like, no man is an island, right? We didn't get to where we are by ourselves. We had people that built into us, invested in us. Um, and it's, it's the call of all of us as believers, as Christians, to build into others, to invest in others, to build up other people in their lives. Mm-hmm. And I think we kind of have a pretty good understanding that, yes, it's important, it's significant to be investing in other people, but let's bridge a little hurdle here. I'm a pastor, you're a pastor. Uh, <laughs> really? What, what about for those who are not a pastor or right. might not hold a, like a position of leadership or something like that? Right. Yeah, I mean... Think about your life. Think about the people who have impacted you the most or people who have just had a big impact on your life. Now, did they have a big impact on your life because they were a pastor or a leader or it was because they cared and they asked questions and they sought it to know how you were doing, right? I think um, people that have just taken us under their wing. You know, in my life, it was even sometimes it's just peers and friends that have just been able to speak truth into my life. And so in reality, this is what all Christians, all believers should be doing. It's not just the pastors or, you know, you know somebody in spiritual leadership or something like that. This is the call for all of us. Um, we should all be building into other people's lives, Christian and non-Christian alike. Um, we have stuff to offer and to give. And this is everywhere in Scripture. Uh, if we want to look at some verses specifically, this is what it says in Titus 2.4. It says, older women are to train the younger women. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul, he teaches Timothy to teach others to teach others. It's kind of like this like, ongoing cascade thing. Uh, in Ephesians 6.4, it says, fathers, you're to train your children. I mean, and then in Matthew 28, we know this kind of the, the, the great call that Jesus gave as he was leaving. He's like, hey, before I leave, do this thing, remember? Go and make disciples of all nations. This is This is a call that he gave to all of us. This wasn't just like one person or another. It was all of us to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus had commanded them. And then we see in Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Encourage one another. Build each other up. This is the letter he sent to the church. This is like, this is what we should be doing, building each other up. I mean, and really, if you think about it, like, this is why he gave the gifts to the church, why we have gifts. In, in 1 Peter 4.10, it says this, Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the grace of God. So we're all to use our gifts to serve others, to build into others. I mean, you can even just think of some of the gifts, you know, like the gift of service or the gift of helping or hospitality or teaching 
or healing or giving or encouraging or the gift of wisdom. Like, these are all given to share with others, not to hoard to ourselves, but to share with others. Um, I mean, we see examples of this biblically. Like, if you want to look at some, like, specific examples, you can think about, like, Moses and Joshua, Eli and Samuel, Elijah and Elisha. I mean, Jesus and the disciples, I mean, that's, that's kind of a... That's a good example. That's a good example. That's kind of like our template there. Or even you can see Paul and Timothy, Paul and Titus, Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Epaphroditus. We get the picture there. Paul was kind of rock star in it for us. Um, but really, this whole kind of idea is summed up in the one command that we have, which is to love others. Really, that's what it is. Because if we love others... We want their best. We want them to grow and mature and develop and, and just see them thrive, right? We want them to know Jesus more and more because it's knowing Jesus that really changes us and grows us, right? Like it's the power of Jesus, knowing Jesus. Make Jesus known. That's our call, right? To make Jesus known and in ourselves, but also to others. And we do that by investing in them building into their lives the truth, the grace, the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the call for all of us. It's not just pastors and spiritual leaders. It's everyone. I can point a <laughs> finger every single one. Camera, online people, it's all of us. <laughs> yeah, and that makes total sense. And yes, I can look back on my life and recognize that there were pastors and youth leaders a part of right. this. Yeah. Uh, but some of the, most, the people who had the most significant role in my life were simply this. The gathering of believers, people that I would naturally encounter as God's people get together. People in my community that made an effort to connect with me, to see things in myself that I could not see in myself yet. <laughs> it wasn't because I was special or they were special. It's just what happens naturally when we're part of a body of believers. So... I want to ask you a question, and this is something that I've really wrestled with a lot in my own life personally. Often I have, I've really wondered what I could possibly even have to offer someone else. What would you say to someone of us, maybe other people of you, that have wrestled with the same kind of thoughts? Yeah, I would say that's a common feeling, and I would look at Ephesians 2.10. that says, you are the masterpiece of God. It says, you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, that you have a God-given value, and he has tasked you with a purpose, but you're not left to do this alone, because he's also given you the Holy Spirit. He has equipped you to make a worthy contribution to the body of believers. And I love the picture that Paul paints in 1 Corinthians 12, where he talks about it as like an actual body with many parts that make up one unit. That's, that's the picture of the church. We're all unique, and we all have a role to play, each one of us, is necessary and have something to contribute. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says that God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. Which means God knows what he's doing when he's bringing us together. We're all necessary. It's how God designed us. We all have imparted value from God. And it's really easy for us to downplay what we have to offer. We can downplay our experiences, uh, not recognizing how significant it can be to share what you have walked through with the people around you. What you have wrestled with and walked through has equipped you to share and care for the people in your community. It gives us the capacity to offer value to others. Again, Ephesians 2.10 says that he has prepared these things long ago for us that we should walk in them. We're going to naturally encounter these opportunities. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7 to 9 says, says it this way. To teach the instructions from God when you sit at home when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Investing in others isn't more or less significant because of the platform that you have or because of the level of specialization you have, but it's the recognition that you have been given the Holy Spirit and there are opportunities day after day right in front of you and using that to leverage how we can care for the people around us. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like, there was one time that I was having some pretty massive doubts of how I could even help someone in their situation because I know that they had gone through just really hard life um, situation at the time. And so they were coming in to meet, and before they, they came in, I just cried out, and I was like, God, what do I have that could possibly help this person? 
you know, kind of like, you know, discouraged and distraught. And his response to me was this, you have my Holy Spirit. Is that nothing? There's a little bit of this rebuke to me of just like, he's like, I'm with you. Am I, am I nothing to you? Um, the same power that raised Christ from the dead in his Holy Spirit resides within us. So we can step out in faith, in confidence, knowing that he will be with us. He will guide us in what to say. He will lead us in what to do. Um, and that I find great comfort in. Yeah, and I've always understood the concept mm-hmm. of that. But moving from theory to praxis is still a bit of a different feeling and, and something that I still find myself hesitating in. Caleb, could you, what are some natural steps? Like, what's the first step to take? Um, what, what does this look like? Right. Well, I think... You mentioned it a little bit when you talked about Deuteronomy. Is we really need to expand our view of what discipleship or mentoring or in, investing is. Because I think for a lot of us in the church, we think about it as like a, you know, a face-to-face meeting where you sit down together with somebody one-on-one or something like that, and you just talk about the Bible, and that's it, and then you leave there, and then your discipleship and your mentoring or whatever is over. But it's so much more than that. It is every single moment of your life. I mean, we look at that Deuteronomy passage. When you walk along the road, when you're sitting down and you're in your home, it's just, it's your whole life. Because Jesus, Lord willing, has affected your whole life, right? Like, there's no area of my life that that Jesus doesn't make a change in for the good, right? You know, so in in how how I parent, how I drive, which we're working on, uh, you know, how we view money, how we work at our jobs, like, Jesus affects every area of our lives in that way. So when you're ever in any of those situations, you have an opportunity to live out the way Jesus has asked you to, to invest in others in that way, to speak into, to, to be an encouragement to others. So it's, it's not just sitting down one-on-one talking about the Bible, although there's a place for that, and that's great, and I love it, and it's very dear to my heart. But it is more than that. It is our entire lives, our entire walking and breathing and living as believers. Um, this is every day. This is basically like when Jesus asks you, like, who is the neighbor, you know, in the parable of the Good Samaritan? It's like anyone who comes across your path, that's an opportunity for you to invest, to build into, build up, to encourage. I mean, if we think about investing, we think about it like it's making like a deposit kind of thing, like putting something good into someone else's life, if we think about it that way. All these moments, you have that opportunity to do that, to invest, to build up and encourage. And I mean, it doesn't have to take crazy amounts of time. It can also be pretty simple and pretty short. So where do you start? Well, I mean, start by looking around you and and seeing who is it that's already kind of in your sphere of influence. I mean, are you involved with a sports team? Are you volunteering in the community somewhere or or something like that? Maybe at your job, is there someone that you could um, intentionally invest in? Or within our church, like as Pastor Andrew was saying, like we have such a wonderful opportunity. And pretty much everything that we do here is to build up to encourage. So whether that's like any of our kids' ministry or Team 252, youth, like men's groups, ladies' coffee break, our missions teams. Like it's just, it's all there. It's all options. And maybe one of those things is something that God's calling you to get involved with, get in, invest in, to share and, and to give. Um, as far as what do you talk about, I have found, actually, interestingly enough, that, like, it's often more about listening and asking questions than it is about knowing all the right answers. Um, And, I mean, I'll admit, I have a hard time with that, and thank the Lord for Pastor Andrew that he's been helping me develop this, that it's okay for me to say, I don't know, rather than try to come up with some crazy answer or whatever. But, honestly, a lot of the times, it's actually more about just asking questions and listening, Because it's just about caring. It's not about like, I have to drill my knowledge into somebody. No, it's about caring and loving somebody else. Um, Although if we do say something, I would would say the most probably impactful things that people have said to me is like when I was younger or growing up, and people called out the good or the potential that they saw in me. Can you guys relate to that? That, you know, some people that had the biggest impact on your life were the people that like spoke, hey, this is something that I see in you that is good. Or this is the potential that I see in you. Let's call out the good that God is doing in people's lives. Because that's like, that's encouraging. That's building up, right? Um, I mean, I actually saw this this week, actually with one of your youth leaders and a youth. And it was in a very short conversation, but it was just like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, man, that's so good. You're really good at that. 
You know, like, and just encourage them. It was a very short interaction, but you just see right there the investment, the building up, and the encouraging, which is what we're all called to do, and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and that really resonates with me. Um, I feel like some of my best or most natural moments of investing in others isn't where you just sit down and say, okay, here's what the Christian life looks like, and here's 10 steps of how we get there. It's about when you recognize that someone is feeling off, when you recognize someone is acting out of character, and you simply say, hey, I... I see that something's a bit off. Is something going on? To which often they'll say, you know, I'm feeling really stressed about this, or this circumstance happened. Uh, Something that leads into the conversation of how they're actually doing and feeling. To which you can respond, that sounds really tough. I'm sorry you're going through that. Uh, What do you think would be helpful right now? And you might not have the answers, like Caleb said, but what it says is that you see that person and you care for that person, and that person is being valued. It's part of this carrying one another's burdens, encouraging one another, pray with one another, all of these instructions from the Bible that lead us into what it means to make an investment in the people around us. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'll admit, it can kind of be a little bit daunting or scary or intimidating maybe sometimes to kind of like step out in that way. Um, What would you Mm -hmm. say to those of us, me included, that kind of have a little bit of fear of maybe like rejection or, or even failing or saying the wrong thing or yeah. messing it up. Yeah, um, we are going to fail. Oh. You, will, <laughs> you will fail. <laughs> and, and I think just recognizing that, that yes, part of these are not going to go exactly as we hope or think, and that's okay. Mm. Sometimes we can uh, overemphasize how detrimental failing is, and that's not always the case. Uh, we can also look at it like this. Of Often when we think that we've failed, it's because we have an expectation of, I want to have this conversation, and I want it to lead to this conclusion. And it might not go that way. But if, if we're framing it in, we want to love our neighbor. We want to love others as Christ has loved us. Even if the conversation doesn't go as planned, you can still communicate and show the people around you that you care for them and that they're important and significant. And just because it doesn't go as planned doesn't mean that the effort wasn't noticed and valued. And it doesn't mean that you're lesser because of it. And these failings definitely don't change how God sees you. And it doesn't disqualify you from having a significant role to play in the lives of other people. Sometimes we fall into the belief that we get one chance. And if we blow it, then it's completely gone. But persistence can pay off. Consistency in your character can be remarkably significant. So even if your last conversation flopped or your time together just felt bland, it's easy for us to shy away, but I would encourage you to stay present. Choose to allow your consistency of character to speak truth just as much as your words do. Be willing to try again or try something different. Often we look for a common interest to help bring us together, and that's great. One thing that I have found really helpful and significant is uh, look for what's different and ask someone to teach you about it. Uh, Ask them about a skill or about a knowledge or an interest they have, and it can go so much farther in creating this dynamic relationship where you're both mutually investing in each other. Um, learning, Learning from another puts them in a position of significance, which allows trust to be built, and these conversations create avenues where spiritual investments can also be made. I think there's so much potential here within our generation gaps as well. These relationships are so significant and so meaningful on either side. Something so unique that you can't find in a pure friendship or in a parent-child relationship. And, and often we hesitate to enter into them because we feel like we can't relate. Maybe there's some cultural barriers that make it feel really challenging to connect. But you can use those to your advantage, to ask about them, to teach each other about them, and I think soon you'll understand that you uh, understand each other more than you thought, that you relate to each other more than you thought, and you enjoy each other more than you thought. The most meaningful relationships aren't necessarily the ones centralized on a common interest, but simply on the care of an individual. And, And taking the step to invest, even when the fear of failure or the risk of failing is present, communicates all the more that this is important, that the other person is valuable enough to take that risk, and it shows them that your faith is making a difference in how you treat other people. Yeah, I I can totally see this in my life. Um, 
There was one time I failed. <laughs> and it was with one of my, my youth small groups of boys. And uh, I had to come to them and confess that I had lied to them about something the week before. Talk about a failure of a youth pastor, right? Uh, and so failed, came, had to, had to confess and, and say, hey, I'm sorry, guys, this is, this is what happened. But you know what? God uses our failures. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for that. But God uses our failures to teach us and to show us. And uh, it's not something that we have to be super scared of. Um, but we can just, you know, walk in faith. I mean, Jesus didn't shy away because of rejection, right? Like, no, he stepped into it because he loved and cared for the people. Are we willing to step into possible rejection because we love them and we want to see their best and we want to, like, build up their lives in Christ, right? This is about love, um, caring for others and building them up. I mean, this is Ephesians 4, 29. It says this. It says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen, those who hear what you say. Can you imagine that? Mm. Every single thing that you ever say ever is for building others up. That's our charge. That's our, <laughs> that's our goal to look towards and to work towards, that we do this together, that we encourage, invest, and build others up. Yeah, that, that's so good and so needed. And what I've come to realize, it's, it's not this trade-off of, okay, I was once invested in, so now it's my turn to invest in other people. But recognizing that I have such a higher capacity to invest in others when I have people continuously investing in me as well. This is something that I still need to. Well, you know what, Michael? <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. But we all need this. This is something for all of us mm -hmm. on both sides of the coin, right? That we invest in others and we are also being invested in. Um, Proverbs 27, 17, right? As iron sharpens iron, so one person will sharpen another. So on the receiving end, mm -hmm. briefly, how, how do you make the most of it on the receiving end of this? Yeah, and that carries challenges with it as well. But a few brief points that are helpful on how to receive being invested in. One, humility is key. Uh, a willingness to learn, recognizing that, okay, maybe you're not the best at this Thing, and recognizing that other people are better at it than you are, and being willing to receive their instruction, um, being teachable, moving from, okay, I'm willing to learn, to I want to learn, and I have a desire to learn, and, and simply being honest with what you need in this season, because as we continue to grow and learn, our areas of needs are going to change, and being honest to say, this is what I need for this season, for this moment, and then seeking out and I can see that this person carries it really well. Mm -hmm. And I would love to learn from them in that. Yeah, this really is the natural outpouring of a Christian community, right? Mm -hmm. Rubbing shoulders with one another, brothers and sisters. Building each other up, yeah, for the glory and praise of Christ. So we want to take a moment now. Maybe as we've been talking, you've already had some names pop into your head, or maybe God's been prompting you of like, hey, want, it, want you to get involved in this or that or, or whatever. But we're going to take a time and just ask Jesus what he thinks and what he wants and maybe who it is in your life that he wants you to build into and invest in or who it is that he wants you to receive from. Um, so that's the two things that we're going to ask Jesus right now. Just take a moment. We're going to ask him, number one, who does Jesus have for you to invest in? And it might be a few names. Um, that would probably be helpful if you would write them down at this point. Um, and then the other question is, who does Jesus have for you to learn from? Um, so let's just take a moment. Jesus, we pray that you would reveal to us who it is that you want us to invest in and who you want us to learn from.
Oh, Father, we, we thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus to this world for us, for our benefit, to grow us, God, so that we could be in relationship with you. God, I thank you for your people, your church here gathered. God, I pray that you would uh, draw us into relationship with others to invest and to build up. God, that you would pour out your spirit that we'd be able to walk out in confidence and faith, knowing that you will lead and that you will guide. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us and celebrating such a beautiful, mm -hmm. unique morning with the, uh, the steps of baptism that were taken today for those within our church family and recognizing that that did not happen without investment going in, in that as well. So as we leave from this place, I encourage you, if you see anyone who got baptized this morning or if you know them personally, make sure you reach out to them, whether it's in the next five minutes or later this week. I encourage you to not let that opportunity go by. Uh, and as we bring this service to a close, as always, there's opportunity for prayer. And there will be those stationed at the front ready to pray with you if there's anything on your heart or mind. We would love to be able to partner with you in that. I just want to pray a blessing over each and every one of us um, that God would delight in you, that you would feel his love. May you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.